Well, thank you. Um, good morning and uh, welcome to the June 18th, uh, 2020 meeting of the New York City Campaign uh, Finance Board. Uh, the first item of the business is the approval of the uh, minutes of our May meeting. I'll move the approval of the minutes. Is there a second? Second. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Uh, the motion carries. Um, I'd like to continue the meeting by recognizing our uh, Voter Assistance Advisory Committee Chair, uh, Naomi Zouderer. Naomi? Naomi, you're muted if you're there. She is there. Uh, okay. Thank you, Chair Schaefer. In honor of George Perry Floyd Jr., Breonna Taylor, and the other black men and women who have been killed by police officers, I would like to observe a moment of silence. Thank you. The CFB and NYC Votes issued a statement earlier this month that I would like to read now. The protests across our city following the killing of George Floyd reflect the pain and anger that many Black New Yorkers and communities of color feel. They are also a powerful demonstration of how our government fails to protect and support all its citizens. We must do better. Voting is an essential tool in our democracy, but it is just one of many. Change happens at every level of our democratic process. It happens through marching in the streets, supporting community organizations, contacting elected officials, attending public forums, joining participatory budgeting, sharing our stories, and so much more. Our mission is to empower every New Yorker who wishes to raise their voice at the ballot box. Voting is not sufficient, but it is essential. State and local elections can have a tremendous impact on creating systemic changes in our criminal justice system and elsewhere. With increased attention on the role local leaders play in these issues, it is fitting that the official NYC Voter Guide launched last week online. Voters can use the guide to learn about the candidates and how to vote safely and responsibly in the June 23rd elections. Many voters have reached out to us wanting to know how candidates plan to address racism and policing. We believe voters should have a chance to hear from candidates on these urgent, important issues before they cast their ballots. To complement the material in the voter guide, NYC Votes is asking all candidates to share their plans using the hashtag NYC Voter Guide and tagging at NYC Votes. Candidates have begun to share those plans, so please go read them by following the hashtag on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter. Early voting for the primary election started on Saturday. Many New Yorkers have requested absentee ballots. Completed absentee ballots must be mailed by Tuesday, June 23rd. If you requested a ballot but have not yet received it, you should call the Board of Elections or plan a time to vote at your early voting poll site. Of course, everyone may vote in person on election day as always. After the election is over, the Voter Assistance Advisory Committee will hold a public hearing on July 1st to discuss voters' experiences during this extraordinary election. 
We hope that this hearing will help the CFB and other election administrators better prepare for the presidential election in November. We will all be watching and learning from this first attempt to expand mail-in voting in New York. We expect that mail-in voting will be necessary in November as well. And as part of the board's efforts to increase participation and civic engagement among young New Yorkers, NYC Vote staff have selected 33 youth ambassadors to help lead the new We Power NYC campaign targeted at our youngest voters and future voters. These youth ambassadors will be engaging their peers in the weeks ahead to get them ready to vote. Thank you, Chair Schaefer. Rick, you're muted. Sorry, I thought I had unmuted. Thank you, Naomi. As Naomi made clear, the last few months and weeks have highlighted how New Yorkers rely on the government to protect their health and safety and to meet their most basic needs. The dual crises of the coronavirus outbreak and the outrage and protests over the killing of George Floyd have shown that elections and voting are not sufficient to prompt systemic change but they are essential. Early voting has started in the primary race for Queens Borough President and election day is just six days away. Later today, the board will authorize a final pre-election public funds payment for the Queens Borough President race, which will be based on the candidate disclosures filed on Friday, June 12th. All five candidates on the ballot have received public funds payments. The board has paid out nearly $4 million in public funds which allow the candidates to engage with voters without relying on big contributions from special interests. Since our last meeting, we took note of a story in the Wall Street Journal about how the pandemic is changing campaigns. The pandemic abruptly transformed so much about life in our city, but it has not changed one fact. Raising funds can be a significant barrier to running for elected office. The city's investment in public matching funds helps everyday New Yorkers step forward as candidates. As the city looks ahead to the critical citywide elections next year and a new set of leaders to chart our recovery, the public campaign financing program will be even more important. For the 2021 citywide elections, voters and lawmakers have made public campaign funds even more accessible to everyday New Yorkers. The goal of those improvements is a matching funds program that helps New Yorkers elect a government that is more inclusive, representative, and responsive. To that end, one of the chief improvements to the program will make public funds available to candidates starting in December of this year. After that, there will be five opportunities to qualify for matching funds prior to the ballot being set for the June primary elections. This new payment schedule means that candidates will have campaign resources earlier than ever before. We believe that this will give candidates time to adjust to the new realities of campaigning ushered in by the pandemic. Thank you. I now turn to Executive Director Amy Loprest for her report. Thank you, Chair Schaefer. Uh, I just have a brief report. As, as the Chair mentioned, the we will be making the first public funds payments in the December in for the 2021 election in December of this year. Uh, the disclosure statement upon which those payments will be based is to be filed on July 15th of this year. Uh, I am happy to report that we have a, a large number of candidates interested in running for office. We have 190 candidates registered with the uh, CFB at this time, which is well ahead of the number number of candidates who were registered at the same point in the election cycle for both the 2013 and the 2017 citywide elections. So we are looking forward to a robust uh, election in 2021. Thank you, Amy. Uh, the next item of business is the announcement of compliant campaigns. Uh, the following candidate from the 2017 elections has completed the post-election audit process without any violations and penalties assessed by the Campaign Finance Board. The board recognizes the diligence of the candidate and his campaign staff in running a campaign that maintained compliance with New York City's campaign finance law. 
He is a first time candidate with the CFB. The candidate is Marvin Jeffcoat, uh, who was a candidate for city council district number 26. The next item of business um, is a, uh, a ratification of primary election payments. I'll ask uh, uh, Executive Director Amy Lopez uh, to uh, explain this uh, uh, this matter. Um, the, bo uh, the board chair approved two payments from the, since the last board meeting, one on July uh, June 1st and one on June 11th. They are, were payments made to all five candidates in the Queensboro president primary election that is to be held next week. Uh, I'll read the payments uh, for the board to ratify the, the chair's uh, approval of these payments. Uh, Costas Cantonides, uh, $23,381 on June 1st and $3,707 on June 11th. Elizabeth Crowley, $59,234 on June 1st and $24,548 on June 11th. Anthony Miranda, $11,476 on June 1st and $3,040 on June 11th. Donovan Richards, $93,760 on June 1st and $9,652 on June 11th. Dao Yin, $29,472 on June 1st and $1,140 on June 11th. Thank you. Uh, would someone like to make a motion to ratify those payments? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Uh, the motion carries. The next item of business uh, is uh, a recommendation for uh, further public fund payments. Uh, Amy, would you introduce that subject? Yes, um, we are. The staff is recommending the board make uh, payments today to five candidates again in the Queensboro president race. Uh, Costas Consonides, a payment of fifty thousand thirty-five dollars. Elizabeth Crowley, a payment of $47,271. Anthony Miranda, a payment of $25,084. Donovan Richards, a payment of $59,419. And Dao Yin, a payment of $39,891. Uh, this will bring the total payments for the uh, Queensboro president primary to $4,099,944. I note that the payments today also reflect the release of the 5% withhold, withholding that has been withheld from every pay previous payment for these candidates. I'll uh, move the approval of those payments. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions, uh, the motion carries. Uh, the last uh, item of business on our public calendar uh, uh, is an advisory opinion. Uh, Amy, who's going to introduce that topic? I'll introduce it. Uh, today we're asking the board to vote to adopt advisory opinion 2020-2, which was issued on June 9th, 2020, and is available on the CFB's website. The opinion was issued in response to a request from the Elizabeth Crowley campaign regarding the attribution of expenditures made and public funds paid for the canceled special election for Queensboro president. Candidates may demonstrate that certain expenditures made in furtherance of that special election are not attributable to the primary expenditure limit, provided they submit documentation related to either the intended audience of those expenditures or the nature of the goods and services purchased. Any public matching funds that candidates receive for the special election will count toward the maximum amount of public funds they are eligible to receive for the primary election. Thank you. Uh, I'll uh, move the approval of the advisory opinion. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Uh, the motion carries. Um, so uh, we have no deliberations since no candidates appeared today. Uh, I will move to go into executive session for some matters that do not require us 
uh, to reconvene. And so the motion will also include a motion uh, to adjourn uh, the public meeting. Before I do that, though, I have a technical question. Uh, we, we have links to deliberations and to executive session. I assume we should click when we get off of this line uh, onto the one for executive session. Is that correct, Amy? That is correct. Okay. Uh, uh, so, Schaefer, let me just mention something that flashed along my screen that may be of interest to everybody. Supreme Court has blocked ending the DACA program. Oh, my. That's very, very good news indeed. Surprise. I, I know nothing more, but I thought that people would be interested. Yeah, glad. thank you. Glad, glad to hear it. Uh, Amy? Yes. I'm going to need a link again. I'm still having to get right now. <laughs> okay. okay. All right. Well, we'll take care of those technical things uh, uh, off screen. So uh, I move that we go into executive session and then adjourn. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstention? The motion carries. Uh, see you all in executive session. Thank you. Thank you.